right, so hey, good night. It's been a little while. It is actually in the middle of the night and I really feel led to share this live and in person. This is the result of a blog post that I wrote very early this morning, actually. I was still in bed when I wrote this and I was really thinking about women who are in really difficult situations right now, really painful situations. And it's a result of things that happened in the past. And it's a result of not letting go of these things. And I'm gonna link the blog post in the description. And I'm going to stop as I'm reading through this, the blog post. And I'm going to insert some of my insight, some of my revelation, and some of my advice with the hope that this is really going to help you let go, right? Very often, we come into these negative situations with this feeling of anger, right? And rightfully so, because... Things may have happened to you that would have caused you to become angry, that would have caused you to even become fearful in some ways. And it's understandable, but while it's understandable, know that that initial reaction, the initial fear, the initial anger, whatever that is, don't unpack your entire life and live in that space because it's very tempting to do that. And then what happens is we are now imprisoned by that thing. We are now imprisoned by what caused us pain and who caused us pain. And I really wanna see women get free. I really wanna see women living their best lives. And I really wanna see women learn to love again. And when I say learn to love again, I mean love themselves because what can happen is when we get ourselves into these situations, we lose love for ourselves. We're so disappointed in ourselves. How could I be so dumb? How could I fall for that? How could I let that happen? And what happens is that we now internalize all this fear and all this shame and all this guilt around this thing that happened. And we also internalize hate. We also internalize unforgiveness towards those who may have hurt us in the past or disappointed us in the past or whatever the case may be. And what we do when we create those scenarios in our heads, when we replay things over and over again, as we are sometimes prone to do, When we do that, we reinforce a story within our minds. It's like, imagine you have a journal, right? And I have my journal right here. So this is my current journal that I'm writing in. This is my pen. So when you replay that story, what you're doing essentially is that you are taking your pen and every single time you think about that, It's like you turn a new page, but instead of writing something new, you're writing exactly the same thing that you wrote the day before or the week before or the month before or the year before. So if you were to take the journal of your life and leaf through it, you would actually read the same story over and over and over again. And that's the last thing that you want to do. Every time you turn a new page in your journal, if you are a journaler like I am, every single time that you turn a new page in that journal, there should be a new discovery. There should be a new discovery on every single page in your journal because when you live your life as a woman with victorious vision, when you live your life on purpose and for purpose, you are intentional about creating a lifestyle that is going to teach you, that is going to heal you, and that is going to help you to grow. And that's what this channel is all about. So I really hope that this is going to be a helpful 
thing for you. Okay, I'm just making sure that I'm still recording. So the name of the blog post is Write a Happy Story. And I open saying that when you're interested in nursing your pain, when you're more interested in nursing your pain than nurturing healing, you'll stay stuck where it hurts the most. And that's what I was talking about. Writing, writing, quote unquote, those scenarios over and over and over again in your journal creates those scenarios over and over and over again in your life because you're telling yourself something that you're going to reinforce by your behavior. So you are going to subconsciously, you don't intend to do this. You don't even realize you're doing it. You're going to subconsciously create situations where you're going to repeat those experiences because it's what you expect. It's what's familiar to you, right? When you nurse the pain, right? When you feed the pain, it's going to grow. And I understand what it's like to be a woman who has been hurt by myself. I've hurt my own feelings, right? And I've been hurt by other people. But what happens when you nurse that pain is that you stay stuck in that place. And I was talking about journaling before, and I'll tell you a quick story. Um, how long ago was this? It was less than 10 years ago, between um, maybe eight to 10 years ago. I had a bunch of journals where I had written all my thoughts and my feelings. And there was a particular day where I was feeling really upset about something. And I took my journal out to write. And I found myself just writing, I think maybe four pages and I was crying and I was pouring my heart out in this journal. Like my, my <laughs> handwriting was scratchy. It was all over the place. Everything was smudged because I was crying so much. And I started to think, when was the last time I felt like this? And I found many instances in my journal where I had written that same thing, maybe four or five times over the years or multiple times even in the same journal. And I just reached a point where I was like, this is ridiculous. I don't want to feel like this anymore. And I had a small metal bucket and I put all my journals into this metal bucket and I poured a bottle of nail polish remover into it and I burned them. Now, <laughs> I don't recommend this because I also burned away lessons. I burned away dreams that I had that I can't recall at this moment. There's information in there that I also burned away. But that day changed how I journal. I started journaling with more intention. I started journaling for insight instead of just as a release. Because I was treating my journal like a trash can, basically. I was treating my journal like that friend you call at 2 a.m. when you've done that thing that you know that you weren't supposed to do, but you did it again, and now you feel like an idiot, and you need someone to talk it out to. <laughs> That's how I treated my journal. And it wasn't serving me, right? It wasn't serving my growth. It wasn't serving the people who I wanted to serve. And that's part of the reason why I started to feel overwhelmed. That's part of the reason why I started to feel unfulfilled and depleted because I wasn't searching myself. I was searching outside of myself. And I see so many women doing that where they don't have the ability to gain their own insight. So a podcast or a prophecy or a sermon becomes your resource for hearing from God, for learning about yourself. And those things are fine in and of themselves. But I always say a woman needs three daily appointments. 
one with God, one with herself, and then her appointments with others. What we can often do is in our appointments with others, we seek the validation and the affirmation and the insight that we need when in fact, those things need to be done privately before we can show up publicly. And it took me years to learn how to use my pen and my journal to gain the type of insight that I needed so that I could actually heal, so that I could actually learn, so that I could actually grow, so that I could actually move on with my life because I was stuck in the same place, repeating the same cycle, having the same conversations over and over and over again. And I was having the same conversations with myself, not just with other people. Because when you have the same conversation with yourself repeatedly, you'll, you won't have anything new to talk about. When you approach trying to resolve a conflict with someone else, trying to find a strategy to get out of a certain predicament, right? You're not going to find the solution because you don't see yourself as a solution. If every time you pick up your journal, every time you have a conversation with someone, or even every time you pray, if you're approaching it from a place of lack, from a place of um, uncertainty, from a place of not seeking wisdom and not seeking insight, but just seeking an outlet to just pour out, pour out and pour out. That has its place. But if that is your continual strategy, there is no room for growth there. And I really want to encourage you to reach the point where you realize that you need to take up the mantle of your own writing, your own life story life is not happening to you it's happening through you and the lessons that life is going to teach you are not going to happen if you hold on to resentment if you hold on to anger if you hold on to fear if you hold on to disappointment if you don't let go of these things what happens is they block your blessings. And then you wonder, why is it my life improving? Why, why aren't my relationships improving? Why can't I lose the weight? Why can't I budget? All these things are a result of the, the rocks that are like piled onto you when you don't take the time for insight, for revelation, for self-discovery. It's really important. Pain is a powerful teacher. And what's going to happen is you're going to realize that it's no longer about what other people are doing to prevent you from living the life that you want to live. You're going to have to admit that you set yourself up to experience this life. And I know that is a hard thing to hear. And this doesn't apply to every single situation. There are situations where there are things outside of your control and they're not, there's nothing that you could have done about the situation that you were in. There are things that may have happened as a child that um, because you did not have the power that you needed in a specific situation, there are things that would have happened that you are now reaping the repercussions of due to no fault of your own. Those are not the things that I'm talking about. The things that I'm talking about are the things that are within your control. And much, much, much of your life is within your control. Um, one of the other things that I wrote, and if you see me looking down, is because I'm scrolling through the blog as I'm talking through this, because I want to touch on a few points that I believe are going to be really helpful to you. One of the hard things that I had to admit to myself was that I sustained the pain that I was familiar with. And what I had to learn how to do was to no longer settle for suffering. And I would make excuses and I would say, well, it's because I have to do this that I can't do that. And I was limiting the life that 
I could live. I was limiting what I was able to achieve because I felt like I was stuck in a certain area, but I was only stuck in my mind. I was not stuck in my ability, right? The things that I have been able to accomplish in the last few years, in the last five years, are things that were always within me. They were always within my reach, but I didn't have the mindset, right? I hadn't yet mastered the mindset until I want to say about 2021. And that's when I started investing in coaching. And that's when I started investing in spending time in self-discovery. And I think that that is something that a lot of women do not take the time to dive into. We look to colleges to, te to teach us whatever skill we might want to learn. We look to podcasts. We look to preachers. We look to people to tell us how we should be, who we should be, where we should be, how we should wear our hair. We look to fashion. We look to all these different things, but we, we don't look within. And so much in social media, so much in culture tells us that we need to look outside of ourselves to find ourselves. We need to find our tribe. And the truth is, yes, you do need to find your tribe. Yes, every woman needs a circle around her that is going to nurture her, that is going to help her in her evolution, that is going to protect her while she cocoons, while she's transitioning from one season of life to another. These are the things that absolutely every woman needs. And every woman also needs to know herself enough to know what tribe she fits with, right? You can find your tribe and it might feel like your tribe at first only to find out that this is not where I belong. Have you ever found yourself thinking that you're in the right relationship, you're at the right job, you're in the right friend group? And then as time goes on, you're like, this doesn't fit. I can't flow here. I can't function here. I feel stifled. I feel stuck, right? Because maybe that's not your tribe or maybe that was your tribe in that season and now you're in a new season. So maybe you need to find a new tribe or even create one or change the culture of the tribe that you are in. Some of you are in dysfunctional tribes and the courage to change that culture comes from cultivating the woman you are. It comes from cultivating that time with God, that time with yourself before you look to connect with other people. When you step out into the world, when you wake up and you start interacting with your husband, your family, your work, your clients, your customers, you have to be centered. You have to know the woman that you are. And that comes from daily introspection. That doesn't come from one podcast or one YouTube video or reading one book. It's a constant state of evolution. And committing to that constant state of evolution is what is going to cause you to learn and grow daily so that when you pick up that journal to write every single day, you're not writing the same old story. You're not writing the story from 10 years ago, from five years ago, from last week, right? Using the insight that you gain every single day is fundamental to your evolution. And I wish more women would see this. I look sometimes at the views on YouTube videos and I look at women and men who are pouring out so much wisdom and the views are so low. And then I look at the gossip and the, you know, the, the, the social media um, little funny videos and stuff like that. And those are cute. Don't get me wrong. I like the dog videos and the baby videos and the wedding proposal videos and the good hair transformation. I love that stuff. But 
I think that we are investing in the wrong thing and we are forgetting that there is so much joy and beauty and ability and creativity and courage within us that we can tap into. We don't need to be distracted by everything that's going on around us, right? So I was talking about settling for suffering. And one of the things that I realized about myself and I've seen it in other women as well. And I think I see it in other women because I experienced it was that I was afraid to be whole. I knew what it felt like to be broken. I knew what it felt like to be disappointed. I knew what it felt like to be scared. I knew what it felt like to depend on other people for certain things, but I didn't know what it felt like to be courageous. I didn't know what it felt like to be healed. I didn't know what it felt like to pick up the pieces of my life and try to move on. And I wasn't saying that, I'm not saying, sorry, that my life was in shambles. I'm not saying that, you know, things were looking horrible. Actually, my life looked pretty great. Most of the people who knew me and I'm talking, who know me, and I'm talking about people who know me closely did not know that there was anything wrong because I knew how to show up and I knew how to smile and I knew how to make it look good and I knew how to make it look easy. But there were days when the children were asleep, when my husband was away at work, when I was alone, I felt alone because I felt like no one understood. I felt like no one cared because here's the thing, when you show up well in the lives of other people, when you serve other people well, when you make it look easy, they don't think there's anything wrong. And then you feel like you're being sometimes even taken advantage of. You feel like nobody cares. You feel like no one can see that you're suffering. And that is exactly so. No one can see that you're suffering because you make it look like you aren't. And we can fall into that trap of the strong black woman or the strong white woman and strong Puerto Rican woman, whoever you are, we can fall into that trap of being a strong woman, but not realizing that being a strong woman means facing everything you feel. And it means that it's not weak to be emotional. It's not weak to be disappointed. It's not weak to want more. It's not ungrateful to be dissatisfied to want more for yourself, to want more for your life, to want more for your children, to want more for the generations that are gonna come from you. Because for a lot of you, this isn't even about you. This, this is about you knowing that you don't want to pass on the guilt, the shame, the resentment, the pain that you feel. You don't wanna pass that on to your children. And for me, at the time when I was going through this, this was before my son was born. And I started thinking about my daughters and I started thinking about what do I want to teach them? What do I want to impart into them that they can take with the, to the next generation? Because I felt like in some ways I had failed my family because had all these dreams and I had all these goals and I had I just laid everything down I laid everything aside there was a time when I needed to be a stay-at-home mom that's what my family needed and I got stuck in that season for far too long I got stuck in that season for far too long I am blessed that my husband makes a good income and he's able to provide for us but there was a point in time where I needed to return to work, but I hadn't done the introspection to understand that returning to work 
did not have to mean returning to a corporate environment. Returning to work didn't have to mean returning to work the way I used to do it. And that's a message for some of you. Returning to what you previously enjoyed, an activity that you previously enjoyed, doesn't mean that you have to do it exactly the way that you did it before. Returning to doing something that you needed to do in the past doesn't mean that you have to do it exactly the way that you did it before, right? If a season changes, your strategy also needs to change, even if the goal doesn't change, right? So for me, the goal was creating income. There are many ways that I can create income. I'm an extremely creative person, but because of lack of introspection, because of being stuck in the cycle in my own mind, I wasn't doing that introspection, right? I was just regurgitating the same complaints over and over and over again. And because I was regurgitating the same complaint, I was repeating the same action and I was creating the same circumstances, right? So I was afraid. I was afraid to be whole and... I was looking at the reality, the perceived reality of my life, but that limited me because what I was not doing was I wasn't dreaming, right? I, I took on the reality of the struggle. And one of the things that I wrote in the blog is don't confuse the struggle within you with the challenging circumstance around you. One is very often the consequence of the other. So I was creating this situation. And I know that there are some of you who are doing the same. So what got me out of this was taking stock of my mindset, taking stock of my lifestyle, asking myself if I'm really taking opportunities to learn and grow and do the things that I need to do for me so that I could actually become the woman that I need to become to move on from that stuck place. And it was a journey to my authentic self. I didn't realize that that's what it was, but I started to question everything. I started to question my beliefs. I started to question my goals. I started to question my relationships and not in a negative way saying, what was I doing here? What was I doing there? Or being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I wasn't being apprehensive. I started getting curious and I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to know the truth about who I am. I wanted to know the truth about what God was telling me through what I was going through. And that's when my relationship with God started to get much deeper. This is about when I turned 40 was when this started. And I believe that it was because I was starting a new decade in life, I was looking for answers. I was looking for hope again. I was looking to dream again. And it's so funny because... I got pregnant with my son when I was, when I had just turned 40, I think. I was 40 when he was born. So he was like, uh, he's like, he's a midlife baby. He's a change of life baby. And so much happened within that time period. My husband was away from home for six weeks at a time. So here I was pregnant with my daughters and now having to adjust to being a single married mom kind of and gaining this new independence and it was a forced independence and because there are things that I had to do because he wasn't there to do them you know he wasn't physically there to do them there was a lot that I had to take on we were building a house my um our older daughter, she was getting ready to do a really important exam. So I was getting her prepared for that. Um, 
maintaining a home and also preparing to move into a new home. It was a whole lot of stuff that happened. And it was this forced transformation. That's the only way that I can describe it. I did not have the luxury of time to prepare for this because a lot of this happened really fast. The This pregnancy wasn't planned. Um, I, I <laughs> would never have planned to conceive a baby with my husband being away, but we made it through. We made it through, but... I said that to say that some of you have been forced into transformation. Some of you have been forced to grow up quicker than others, quicker than you would have liked to. Some of us have been forced to have responsibilities that we otherwise would not have taken on, right? And here we are with this thing in our hands and we're not sure what to do with it. We're not sure how to move on. If you don't have the ability to pull back, even if it's for five minutes, to pull back and step inside yourself and not tell yourself, suck it up and keep it moving, but to actually process what is happening, to actually process what is happening outside of you in the circumstance and what is happening inside of you in terms of your emotions, in terms of your will, in terms of your mind, that is your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. What is happening inside of your soul that is going to affect the goal outside of you? If you do not have the ability to do that, you're always going to feel like life is coming at you. So this is something I had to learn quickly and in real time. And I want to I know that for some of you it is it's really hard, but I want to encourage you that it is possible to unlearn some of the behaviors that are causing you to feel stuck. It is possible to break free from some of the negative mindsets that are causing you to feel stuck. It is possible to learn how to write a better story for your life. And when I say that, I literally mean write a better story for your life. There is a resource that I have. It's called The Reset. And I'm actually going through it right now because as I am in midlife, I'm 49, and this is mid-year, I am approaching things from a different perspective. I'm now approaching things from the perspective of a woman who has the wisdom to navigate this and navigate it well, navigate it with courage and navigate it with curiosity and with confidence. And I'm even marveling at myself saying this because this is something that even a year ago, I was apprehensive about so many things that I am no longer apprehens apprehensive about. And I'll tell you what the one thing is that was the game changer for me. It's authenticity. When you take the time to sit with yourself and understand yourself, you understand where you're coming from, right? And when you go through the process of purification because when you start dealing with what you're angry about, when you start dealing with what you're disappointed about, what you are hurt about, what you've been making excuses about, where you have been lying to yourself, all these things, when you start doing these things, your vision becomes clearer. And what starts to happen is you are no longer making excuses about your budget about your waistline, about starting a new project, about anything, about what you want in relationships. You are no longer making excuses about these things because you have done the work. You have done the internal work that needs to be done to get yourself to a place where you now can act authentically. And that's one of the things that I teach in the A-list assignment, it's act authentically. When you act authentically, you, you can't feel like you, you're letting yourself down, right? 
you're never going to feel like you're letting yourself down because you know, I've done the work. I know myself. I'm not lying to myself. This is how I actually feel. This is what I actually want. This is where I actually want to be. This is where I actually am. And this is what I need to do to get to, I to where I want to be. And you're not intimidated by the process. You're excited about it because you know that every step along the way, you're approaching it from a state of authenticity, right? Your soul knows when you're lying to yourself. Your soul knows when you're being delusional, right? Your soul knows when you're limiting yourself and when you're acting in a way that is not in alignment with who you truly are. Your soul knows you get that knot in your stomach. You feel like an imposter. You're doing all these things and you're like, this is not me. This is not me. This is not what I really want. This is not who I really am. What if you can be the type of woman who, regardless of the room that you show up in, you're showing up as yourself? And that is powerful. You take that into a job interview, you take that into a relationship, you take that into every aspect of your life. Because at the end of the day, when you lay your head down, you're going to have to, you're going to have to make peace with the woman that you've been all day. Right? And you're going to have to make peace at the end of your life with the God who created you. So you are worth discovering. You are worth discovering and you are worth the work that it takes to write a happy story. I am going to link the blog post. I would love to hear from you. This was just kind of a blog, just to sit down and express some things to you. I hope that it resonated with you. I hope that you were able to hear yourself in what I was saying. And I hope that you are able to feel what I feel for you. This is, it's 218. It is 218 AM. <laughs> and I know that this is gonna resonate with someone and this is why i'm up at 2 18 a.m talking about this because it's important it's important that we embrace ourselves it's important that we take care of ourselves not just the hair not just the makeup not just the fashion not just the home decor but that we take care of our souls and we take care of our goals because you don't want to be a woman who reaches her 60s, her 70s, her 80s, and is looking back on her life and saying, I wish I had taken more time to get to know myself. Because now I'm living a life full of regrets of all the things that I didn't do and all the things that I didn't learn. So I hope this helps. Blessings on your journey. I will talk to you soon.